Welcome to the HS Game Time studio for another edition of By the Numbers with EPJ. And Eric, we're going to start with your question from last week. Jacob Taylor running wild on the mountain against Notre Dame. He's on course to set the San Bernardino County record, but he, who's the guy he's chasing right now? Yeah, Jacob Taylor right now about 4,400 career yards. If the rim can make a nice little playoff run, he's got a chance to uh, maybe set that San Bernardino County record currently held with 5,772 yards by Joe Weber of uh, San Bernardino Pacific in the early in the mid 90s there and Joe Weber went on to be a fairly a fairly good player at Texas A&M so you know definitely a record that stood for you know about 15 years so Taylor making a nice run at that mark. Looks, yeah it looks like it might fall this season. All right from running the ball to throwing the ball Chase Chambers at Murray at a Mesa is having a huge year and uh, I guess the guy benefiting the most is uh, Khalil Sharp out there. Yeah, you know, Chambers is still on pace to break all these uh, com career completions and um, attempts records, but when you make that many throws, your receivers are going to make a lot of, um, you know, catches out there. And Khalil Sharp right now, coming off a huge game, even though the Marietta Mesa lost last week, he made 18 catches last week, which is tied for the second most in area history, only one behind the 19 that Marshall Jones of Palo Verde Valley um, had back in the 90s. But uh, Khalil Sharp right now, only eight uh, catches away from setting the area's uh, career um, reception mark. So, and it is pace right now. He's averaging a little over nine catches a game. And if you throw out a two catch game against Lakeside, he's averaging almost 11 catches a game. He's got a shot to also uh, break the area's single season uh, reception mark, which is 96, set by um, Palo Verde's AJ Kemp and Temecula Valley's Adam Watson. So, Definitely, you know, Chase Chambers' favorite target, without a doubt, is Khalil Sharp. So does Chase owe Khalil dinner, or does Khalil <laughs> owe Chase dinner for all these records? I think they both owe the <laughs> offensive coordinator. There you go, and, and the line. And, How about the line? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> They're getting a lot of time to throw back there. All right, uh, sticking with the subject of scoring and scoring in bunches, Vista Marietta against Temecula Valley. The Broncos, just a barrage of points in the first half against the Golden Bears. Yeah, you know, you look at that, you know, look at the box score. They scored 37 points in the second half, and you're thinking, wow, that's impressive. And then you go look at the actual when they scored all their touchdowns, 58 points in that game. And all of them came within a span of 12 minutes and uh, 38 seconds. But even more impressive to me is that 51 of those 58 points came in 9 minutes and 4 seconds. So a lot of big touchdowns. It looks like they had a couple turnovers, maybe an onside kick return there. So Mr. Murrieta, you know, they're, they're maybe more known for some defensive play and everything. But they can take advantage and, and definitely put the ball in the end zone quite often. So that's impressive, 58 points in basically just over a quarter. Have you ever seen something like that, that many points in that short amount of time? Uh, and that, that's for, especially at that high of a level in, in a Southwestern League game, that's, yeah. that's quite impressive. The state record for points scored in a quarter is 58 uh, by Acton Vasquez. So you're thinking Vista, just 30, you can't credit it because it's over two quarters, mm -hmm. but in generally of uh, 12 minutes, 38 seconds, just over a quarter, they equaled that mark. So very impressive by the Broncos. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, uh, Kaiser, known for their defense this season. They had an undefeated uh, season going, and they ran into Summit last week in Sunkiss play, and they, they lost at home, which doesn't happen very often in league play. No, it was the first time that Kaiser lost on its on its on campus field since it, since they started playing there in 2008. But it was also Kaiser's first league loss at home in uh, 34 games. They had won 34 straight games. Uh, they used to play at Fontana, and it was only the second loss ever for Kaiser in a league game at home. The only other team to beat them was Rubido back in 2000 at Fontana High School. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we I, a couple weeks ago we did the great home field advantage, and Kaiser definitely has that in league, but, you know, very impressive win by Summit doing something that's, you know, only happened twice now. So, very impressive victory for, for Summit there. And Col a Colton Yellow Jacket went for seven touchdowns, which is great, but it's not the best. That leads us to our question for this week. Yeah, we had a lot of great players last week. Craig Lee ran for six touchdowns in one half. Jacob Taylor had six touchdowns against Notre Dame. But Jordan Ahoney of Colton ran for six touchdowns and also caught a 92-yard touchdown pass. So seven touchdowns in their victory last week. But... Um, Nowhere close to the record if you're kind of looking at it. Um, you know, the record in the area is 10. So the question is, which inland area player scored 10 touchdowns in a game to hold that record? Any hints? Any, mm. uh... <laughs> not Toby Gerhardt. It's not, that's the hit every week. It's not Toby Gerhardt. All right, thanks for joining us. EPJ will be back next week, and he'll have your answer with who has the most touchdowns in one game in the area. I'm Pep Fernandez, and that's EPJ.